Hi everyone, this is Nick Poliak. Today we are going to spend 5 to 10 minutes presenting the features of a new multi-platform UI docking framework called Unidock. I built it myself recently. It's very powerful, it's multi-platform. It has uh, some great features. It's Avalonia based, it's open source and it's well documented. And uh, next to this video I'm giving the links that you'll need to learn more about Unidock. Very soon we are going to run the application, but before we run the application, I want to show you the project that uh, contains the demo. The project, by the way, can be found on the GitHub. Next to this video, I'm going to post the links to the project. Everything is open source, including the demos. And uh, this project is a typical Avalonia uh, application project. It has five files. Uh, the only file that we have some interesting stuff in is mainwindow.azaml, the XAML file. There is a little bit of uh, stuff also in uh, app XAML but it's only references to add to the generic styles and resources. So uh, the only package that, that we had to install in order to get references to Avalonia was the NP Avalonia Unidoc package. Like if we go to a NuGet Manager, you can see that this, this is the only package to install. Everything else is pulled by the package itself. And you can see that inside the NuGet package, there is a bunch of other packages, including references to Avalonia 01010. And uh, the main window.asml file is very simple. It contains the doc manager at the top. We define it as a resource. The doc manager is the power horse behind the whole functionality. So then we define the groups, uh, the docking groups. There is a root doc group, uh, the root of every window, and it contains a stack doc group with a vertical orientation. And this stack doc group contains two groups. One of them is stack dog group with the orientation horizontal and one of them is the tab dog group. The horizontal stack dog group at the top contains two document panes, hi and hello with headers hi and hello. And the tab dog group contains three tabs in it. So if we start the application, we can see the two dog panes at the top and the three tabs at the bottom. And uh, we can change the order of the tab by dragging them within the tab area and change it back. Or we can uh, pull the high pane out and we can pull the, say, tab two out. Uh, you can see that uh, the the pane that was active last on the window is highlighted. Tab 2 is highlighted a little more than a high pane. And if you click on the window, the window becomes active. The highlighting is even more prominent. So now we can drag the floating window back and dock it, say, to the side of the tab group. Now we dock it to the side of the tab group. We can pull it out back and create it anew. And now we can drag it and make it the side of the whole window. So we are good, but uh, there, are, there is more functionality to show. We can press this toggle button at the bottom and it will switch the whole window into the editable state. Now each group has its own header, even though it's a little confusing. But if we do the mouse over the, head, the group header, it will highlight the content of the group. For example, if we mouse over the head of the stack dog group 2, it will highlight whatever is under the group. If we do stack dog group, dog group 16, it will highlight high and tab 2. We can pull those two tabs together out. That's what we do by, by using the header. The floating window is not in the editable state, but it has a button edit uh, in its header. And if we press the button, we'll put it into the editable state. You can see that uh, the stack dog groups can be locked. They have a lock icon, which is toggable in the editable state. If we press it, it will lock the, the content of the dog group. So now they are two panes together for all purposes. They will behave as a single docking pane. We can try to dock it to the side of the window, for example. And by the way, we can switch the editable state off and we'll still have this uh, two docking panes together with the same header. The only thing that we cannot do at this point is to uh, make them a tab in the tab group. Like you see the, the center area in the, inside the compass is missing. This is a feature that's going to be added at some point to the software. So now we're going to un unlock them back. Sorry, we need to switch to the editable state in order to unlock them. And then press the lock button 
and now it's unlocked and we have two separate docking panes again. Now take a look at the tapped dock group in the main window. See this uh, little combo box in its header? This combo box allows you to set the tabs to appear on different sides. By default they're on the top and uh, you can make them to be on the right. You see there are two tabs on the right. Uh, you can make them to be on, uh, on at the bottom. Two tabs at the bottom. Uh, and you can make them to be also on the left hand side and uh, just like in case of uh, the usual position you can uh, change the order of the tabs by dragging them within the tab area you can pull the tabs out into, into floating windows and so on and so forth as you can see there is also a checkbox allow tab docking if you uncheck it and uh, it doesn't matter if, if you are in, in the editable state or not you won't be able to pull the tabs out or change their order by dragging them. Like if we go out of the editable state, you still cannot do it. And you won't be able to remove them either by clicking the close button. The close button is disabled. Okay, I think we are good. We'll switch now to a different example. And the next demo project is called Default Parent Demo. And uh, first of all, let's take a very short look at uh, the XAML code. We have uh, the same uh, root doc group referencing the doc manager. This is fine. But take a look that uh, most of the groups are defined as stable. You see is stable group equals true. And uh, some of the groups have a default dog group ID set to be their parent. Uh, for example, here default dog group ID of this group is top level group. And this is the dog ID of, of its parent. And uh, the same is true about the tab dog group. Its default group ID is top level group, which is its parent. And its default dog order in group is two. Also, the dock items, which represent the dock panes or tab panes, uh, they all define default dock group ID. Here, for example, it, it's uh, set to be its parents dock ID. And again, you know, we have default dock order in group is one. And here it's probably a mistake. Uh, they should be different within the same group. We have a default dock group ID equals to top stack order and default dock order in group is two. And the same as here for the tabs, except for the Doc item 3, which is left as before for the sake of contrast. Doc items for tab 1 and tab 2 define default doc group ID and uh, to be its parent. And uh, the doc item for tab 2 also defines the default doc order in group equals 2. The default doc order in group is by default is 0, so we don't have to define it on the first item. So now let's try to run the sample and uh, lo and behold, if we try to drag a tab, uh, tab 1 out into a floating window, we can see that uh, there is a context menu item in this window, restore default location. Also, the same context menu item is in the dock pane header. So if we press on it, it will dock back to its parent. And if we move tab 3 into the first position, just for the fun of it, we drag it out. If we, okay, I'm sorry, tab 3 doesn't define the, the default dock group ID. So nothing is going to happen. But if we move the tab 2 into the first position and drag it out and then restore it to the default location, it will be second in the group as it's supposed to be originally because it's a default dog order in group equals 2. So let's get the main window back. Let's uh, put the tab 3 back to into the, the correct place. Then let's uh, change the window into the editable state. Drag the whole tabbed group out and do the restore default location for the whole window. And lo and behold, it's uh, coming back to the same place where it came from. Now I also want to show you the deal about the stable groups. If you have a group which needs to go back to its original parent, then its original parent shouldn't be removed. So stable groups are defined as groups that cannot be removed completely. For example, except for the root group. All the groups are stable in this uh, sample. So if we pull it out, we can see that the X button is missing. You, you cannot close a floating window that contains a stable group. So groups are also indestructible in the main window. You see that the uh, close buttons are all grayed out. Such groups uh, to show the stability are marked with an anchor. 
And the last small sample that I want to demonstrate is actually I added some functionality based on uh, the Visual Studio functionality. Like if you try to, to dock a Visual Studio document to an area outside of the document area, it will fail. You will not be able to do it. If you pull two documents out, they'll be able to dock together, but won't be docking to anything else. I'm trying to demonstrate it. So yeah, they will dock together very well, but you won't be able to dock them to any other area except for the document area within the Visual Studio. Such functionality was built into Unidoc by uh, creating a property group only by ID. Like as, as you can see, the bottom tabbed group has this property set to documents and each one of its uh, doc items corresponding to its tabs has a group only by ID set to documents. So now if we, if we start the application and if we pull some tabs from the bottom tabbed group, you won't be able to dock them to any, to any other area within the main window. They will only tab to the bottom tabbed group. They can be tabbed on the sides or they can be tabbed uh, back to, to become the group tabs. If you pull out high pane and tab one, you won't be able to dock them together either. But if you pull out tab two, then you will be able to dock it together with tab one and you'll be able to dock them back to the tabbed group. So this is like uh, by using this uh, feature, you can create a document area or you can create several areas in which the tabs or docking pane will only dock together, but will not dock to other places within the window or to other floating windows whose uh, items are not marked with the same group only by ID property. As a conclusion, I want to say that Unidoc has several more important features. There is an article whose uh, URL is given next to the video, and this article contains uh, several important samples describing how to use view models together with Unidoc functionality. Thank you for your attention. Bye.